Happy, uh, happy Pentecost Sunday to you. On this day, I don't know, what was it 2,000 or 3,000 years? What was it, Pastor Keith? About 2,000 years ago? 3,000? I was getting confused. 3,000 years ago? 2,000. This day, 2,000 years ago, 120 people in an upper room were just chilling, enjoying each other, minding their own business, when all of a sudden, from heaven came the Holy Spirit to the earth. It sounded like a mighty rushing wind. It wasn't a wind. Okay. It sounded like a mighty rushing wind. It didn't blow through the room. He hovered in the room. Just what, When was the last time he did that? Genesis 1, in the chaos, in the void, in the nonsensical, in the Hebrew word, tuhu. There, Holy Spirit hovered in the chaos. Hovered. What was he doing? Waiting. Waiting for God to do. To speak. And God said, let there be light. And there, the Holy Spirit went, shazam. Okay. And there was light. And now all of a sudden we see there came from heaven the Holy Spirit like a mighty rushing wind that did not blow through the, the room. He hovered in the room. And then there was a, a tongue of fire that came in and divided up. And every person, every person, every woman, not just the men, not just the leadership, not just the 12 apostles, everyone that was in that room was filled with the Holy Spirit. And guess what? It was, it was, it was all you can drink all night, I mean, all, all morning long. In fact, like, anyways. So Holy, Holy Spirit, we honor you tonight. Holy Spirit, we honor you tonight. Holy Spirit, we honor you. We're not looking for you to come. You are already here. We can, we can discern you here among us and in us. And for those of us here that have not yet heard and received and believed, Lord, we thank you that tonight is the night when, when people are going to discover their identity and destiny in Jesus Christ. And they're going to get filled with the Holy Spirit. They're going to get a new prayer language. They're going to get the gift of prophecy. And they're going to get activated. Lord, we thank you that tonight is the night of activation. All, all God's people said... Amen, amen. So, happy Pentecost Sunday. Uh, Nate, if you could just turn me up just, 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 just a tad. Um, I find that there's a correlation between loud volumes and revival. <laughs> Pastor Keith's like, no, no, there's not, there's not, there's not. Um, hey, if you got your Bibles, uh, grab them. We're going to be in 1 Corinthians chapter 14 tonight. And, um, and this is going to be really good. It's good to see my homeboys from Teen Challenger back tonight. Good to see you guys. You're here because you're hungry, right? You're here because you're hungry and thirsty and you want more of the Lord. Uh, yeah, so. <laughs> and Brian, you got, you, got, you got filled with the Holy Spirit. You got baptized in the fire this morning and received your prayer language this morning. Man, love you, buddy. Love all you guys. Come on. Tonight we're going to be talking about the biblical, the biblical church, okay? And, um, and, and this is going to be, going to be good. Uh, it's, it's interesting, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, Paul says to the church to not be ignorant of supernatural realities, okay? This is what he says. There are other realms, okay? There are gifts of the Spirit. You're going to need these gifts. How many know in order for us to do what God is calling for us to do, we're going to need a utility belt? In the spirit, okay, in, in, in the spirit, that you're going to need access to these, these various uh, spiritual gifts. Now he says there's a diversity of gifts, and he goes in, there's the gift of healing, okay, there's the gift of prophecy, the gift of miracles, there's even the gift of administration. There's all these beautiful gifts that, ex that exist, and he talks about it in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Hey, church, don't be ignorant of spiritual things. And then he says, he covers it all, and then he says in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, as amazing as as this, as this is, we must not forget what Paul calls the most excellent way or the more excellent way, which is the way of 
which is the way of love. Yeah. So we looked at uh, spiritual gifts, the supernatural, and then we saw um, uh, uh, the way of love. And now all of a sudden we come into 1 Corinthians uh, uh, chapter 14. Now this is interesting because we are Seattle Revival Center. And we love the fire. This next week we've got Richard and Libby Gordon coming in from, from Beth. In fact, in fact there, there's a lot of them coming. Okay. Uh, last time we just had two people. Rumor has it, listen. There's a lot of them coming from Reading, okay? They're like, yeah. I, <laughs> and that's okay, because Seattle needs a lot of them. <laughs> Seattle's going to need a lot of us, okay? Look at the person next to you say, the, the Northwest is going to need a lot of you. <laughs> yeah. Nate. Nate. Bring it up a little more. Okay. Third service, okay? <laughs> Turn it up. So they're coming in on Thursday night, and they're going to be with us until, until, sun, until Sunday night, and, and we're just going to be going after the presence of God. We're just going to be going after the presence. And I can tell you this. This is what I know about Richard Gordon. Is the guy doesn't show up with any, with any a, a agenda. In fact, uh, not only this, you guys don't even know this yet, um, but on June 12th, um, uh, 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 Bonnie Jones, who was married to Bob Jones before he died, she's going to be here on Sunday night uh, uh, ministering here. Uh, I was talking with Bonnie uh, just the other day on the phone, and this is, this is what she said. She said, Bob and I, this is what we do. The Lord would send us to different places, and when we'd show up, our motto was, show up on time and show up empty-headed. She said, and, and meaning, well, let's show up, but let's not show up with an agenda. Let's just show up and just welcome Holy Spirit. Let's see what he wants to do, and let's hear what he wants to say, and then, let, and then let's, let's release it. So this next week, a bunch of hungry people. I mean, this place is going to be packed out. We're already hearing of people coming in from, from, from all over the place. Why? Because people are just so hungry, right? I, I, are you just hungry right now? Just, you know. <laughs> That's Thursday through Sunday. Sunday we'll have three services, our, our typical our typical times. But we're going to be going after uh, the Lord, and it's going to be getting wild. And that's what I love about you guys is that, is that you're wild. Some of you are even um, more wild than me, and some of you are so wild, you concern me a little bit. You know, and, 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 and this is what I love about SRC. Like, the, the power of God could come and slam me to the floor, and it wouldn't even bother you. You would just be like, more Lord. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> There are some churches where if the pastor got slammed to the floor, they try to cast the demons out of him, right? Like, out, come out, come out, right? And, and, and I love it. We love the glory of the Lord. We love the presence of the Lord. And we'll never apologize for the manifestations of the Spirit, no matter how goofy we look. People say, I don't understand why, why, why you guys shake and, 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 and scream and cry and laugh and, 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 and do all your... I don't understand why you, why you, act, why you act that way. And, um, and what I would say is, well, let's take you over to the electrical outlet and I'll shove your finger into that electrical outlet and we'll just keep it there for a couple seconds. And we'll see how you act. You know, most likely you're going to let out, you know, just depending on who, on who you are. If you're a big tough guy, you might, you know... You never really know these days, right? Like, like so, you might scream, you might, you might do whatever, you might start crying, you might start laughing. Ah, oh, tickles! Ah. You know, I don't know. Listen, the, the electricity has nothing on the power of God. How many you've ever felt the power of God? How many have ever felt the electricity, the currency of the power of God just come upon you? And I was talking with a brother who was here last Sunday night. God touched you, brother. You said your week is, your whole life is, is different because, because the power of God came on you. You said um, that, 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 the, that the tears this last week were not tears of sorrow or tears, but th this whole week your tears were tears of joy because you felt the power of God one week ago tonight. I told your testimony. I, 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 hey, listen now. Just one touch of his spirit, just one touch of his presence, you'll never be the same. And so that's what I love about you. Now, when it comes to the church, when it comes to the power of God, when it comes to the fire of God, um, like we would probably call ourselves a, a presence-driven church. And so what we're going to be looking at tonight is we're going to be looking at a text, 1 Corinthians chapter 14. And this is a particular kind of text that's not really studied in charismatic churches. Okay, In churches where we speak in tongues, we pray in tongues, we, we fall on the floor. You know, uh, you know, just so you know, if this is your first time, like full disclosure, we got, we've got one or two holy rollers here. 
I had to explain it to a guy that he goes, I'm a holy roller. I was like, oh, you roll? He's like, no, it's, a, an, ex, it's, a, it's, it's an expression. I was like, no, it's not. <laughs> How do you know a holy roller? Because you literally roll. It's the six o'clock. We're a little unhinged tonight. All right? I, can, I can already tell you, this is nothing like the morning services. All right, good time. So um, this is what well, we know, that in this particular text, there's actually some, there's like some correction that comes from the Apostle Paul into the, into the Corinthian church. Because believe it or not, but the Corinthians are, are, are really, really wild. Okay? Now, um, we're going to do a quick survey here, and we're not being rude. We're just, I'm not going to, I'm not going to ask you any further questions, but just by, by the way, show of hands, how many of you guys have ever been in like, in a really dead church? Just go ahead and hold your hand up really high. Like, you've ever been in a really dead, dead, dead church? Okay. Awesome. Um, and you're not talking about here, right? No, no, no. No, I know you're not talking about here. Here we go. And here's the thing. So my grandpa, okay, he was, he was the first generation saved in our family line. Um, Stotts, okay, we, we were not very nice people. Um, we were pr- pub crawlers, okay, we were Vikings. Um, you know, most likely my ancestors stole your ancestors' sheep, you know, and, um, and that's, that's, on the, on, that's on the more redemptive things that we did. And so now when my grandpa got saved, that was a big deal. Now my grandpa got saved in a revival meeting. My grandpa used to hand roll 40 cigarettes, hand roll and smoke, okay, it's impressive just hand rolling. But he handled and smoked 40 cigarettes a day, okay? And he used to drink like a fish. It got so bad that my grandma said, uh, Bob, I'm leaving you because of your alcoholism. He was desperate, and he went to a revival meeting in Nelson, British Columbia. And there at that revival meeting, the altar call came in, and uh, he was sitting there in the meeting, and he said, um, I'll, I, I, I need to get saved, but this is what he said, I'll do it later. And Jesus spoke to him and said, you're going to do it now or it's going to be never. He got up. He went to the front uh, to receive prayer. The power of God came on him, broke that spirit of alcoholism. He went home that night, poured out all of his booze. He never touched another cigarette. Yeah, that, 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 that addiction was, was broken. Now, here's the problem. When you experience the power of God like that, when you experience the fire of God like that, you're ruined for dead church. Now, here he is, my grandpa. He lived to be the oldest of what we know of the Stotts. Uh, Stotts never lived very, very long. We, we burned hot and we burned out, you know, at a, at a, at a, young, at a young age. And, um, uh, uh, but my grandpa lived to be up into his 90s. There was a period of time my wife and I went to Canada uh, to the rest home where he was at to take him to church. And so we drove him to his church. It was a lot of fun. And we went and we sat uh, in, in the congregation. Now, here's the thing. My grandpa was deaf, okay? He used to joke around. He used to say, I'm deaf in one ear and can't hear out of the other. <laughs> and then he'd laugh. That was his sense of humor. And um, he's like me. He thought he was funny. Nobody else did. And so <laughs> we're sitting there in the church. My grandpa leans over. And because he's deaf, he doesn't know how loud he is. My grandpa says, this place is dead. <laughs> really out, out loud, right? Everybody could hear him. I was like just cringing. I was just like, I was like, Grandpa, be quiet. Shh. The guy's just preaching. He's doing his best, man. And then my grandpa leans over again and goes, I gotta go to the bathroom. I said, okay, Grandpa, just go. You know, people are laughing. You see their shoulders kind of doing, doing this kind of thing. So, yep. Now, here's another question for you. How many of you, you've been to a church that's not just alive, but it, it's almost like... Um, too alive. If there's such, how many of you have ever been to a church that was that was so wild that it was actually like crazy? Like like you actually wondered if anyone was even in charge anywhere in the room. How many of you ever? Okay. <laughs> how many of you have ever been to a church service where you actually like felt unsafe in in the church service where you're just like, okay, I see that hand. I see that hand. Again, I hope that's not here. Um, okay, I see that hand. Yeah, that's kind of what it looks like in. Um, in Corinth. Uh, it, it's going off, and here's the thing that Paul writes a letter to the Corinthians to talk about their, their worship. And um, so let's check it out. Everybody there? 1 Corinthians chapter 14. And we're going to do this out of the Passion Translation, which is basically a, um, a passionate translation. <laughs> so if your translation isn't passionate, it's time to upgrade. Here we go. It's good that you are 
enthusiastic and passionate about spiritual gifts. That cracks me up. Right off the bat, Paul's like, hey, now listen, it's good that you guys are basically very ADHD when it comes to spirituality. Like when it comes to spirit, like you're just like, you know, he's like, that's good. I, I applaud. I applaud your passion. Look at, he goes, especially prophecy. When somebody speaks in tongues, now he's talking about tongues, no one understands a word that he says because he's not speaking to people. Check it out. He's speaking to God. And what is he doing? He is speaking intimate mysteries into the Spirit. This is what Paul says. That one who speaks in tongues, he's actually speaking to God. And when he speaks in tongues, he's uttering intimate mysteries in the Spirit. Now listen, I know that a lot of churches would say some get the gift of tongues and some don't. But this is what I know. If I was a believer in Jesus, okay, and I read that, that he who speaks in tongues speaks to God and his Spirit is uttering intimate mysteries. I don't know about you, but I'd be like, I want that. Like, you can have a theology that some get it, some don't, but this is all I know. I might not have it, but I sure want it. I'm going to get it. Why? Because I'm really, real hungry for that. So I want some of that. So let's continue. Verse 3. But check it out. When someone prophesies, he speaks to encourage people. To do what? To build them up and to bring them comfort. Verse 4. The one who speaks in tongues advances his own spiritual Progress. To the one who speaks in tongues, he doesn't speak to man. He speaks to God, and he utters intimate mysteries in the Spirit, and he advances spiritually. Pretty awesome, right? We're going to be laying hands on people tonight. If you haven't been filled with, the, if you haven't been baptized in the fire of God, if you haven't received a prayer language, and you're hungry for it, you want it, you can have it tonight. You'll, you'll engage by faith. We'll lay hands on you, just like in the New Testament, and you'll 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 believe and you'll receive. Amen. Verse 4, the one who speaks in tongues advances in his own spiritual progress while the one who prophesies builds up the church. I would be delighted if you all spoke in tongues, but I desire even more that you impart prophetic revelation to others. Look at the person next to you and say, Paul wants you to prophesy. He's like, I, I wish that you were all prophetic. I wish that you all would speak in tongues. But I would rather that you all prophesy. Listen, hi, my name is Pastor Darren, and I would love it if everybody at Sierra Bible Center could prophesy. I think that you can, all, you can all prophesy. You can all speak in tongues. These gifts are available, and this is what Paul is saying. I would be delighted, okay? Um, greater gain, okay, comes through the one who prophesies than the one who speaks in tongues. Unless there is interpretation, so that it builds up the entire church. Verse six, my dear friends, what good is it if I come to you always speaking in tongues? But if I come with a clear revelation from God or with insight or with a prophecy or with clear teaching, I can enrich you. In the same way, if musical instruments such as flutes or stringed instruments are out of tune and they don't play the arrangement clearly, how will anyone recognize the melody? He uses another uh, analogy. He says, if the bugle makes a garbled sound, who will recognize the signal to show up for battle? Okay, very interesting here. Now, I know that um, some people believe that, hey, the, the church, okay, the, the stage is like, you know, you got a worship team up here. And basically anyone that, that plays an instrument should be able to be on the worship team, you know, like, you know, it, it, some people think that, hey, listen, you know, every Friday night I'm at Kung Pao Kitchen and I sing karaoke and when I sing, man, everyone just... They, they people cry when I sing like 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 I am I like I, I am I am like in, and here's what he's here's what he's saying hey um, everything that we everything that we do if you're playing an instrument or whatever you should you should tune your instrument if you're a singer you should you know learn how to sing right like like this is what he's saying hey everything that we're doing in the kingdom is unto the king it's unto the king now this is what Paul says now you guys at your church and you're you're shabada kada bada kada yabada kada yabada and but uh, people that don't yet believe and haven't yet received they have no clue what you're saying in the same way if you got an out of tune flute okay i don't know what the flute's doing in the church but if you got an out of tune i'm just having fun if you've got a flute <laughs> and it's out of tune and they're playing something and it's not even intelligible melody, then you don't know what it is. Then he has a better example and he's like, hey, if you've got a bugle player and, and, he, and he's, 
And now I know about bugle players because my son is a bugle player. Um, he's got a, a trumpet with that grandpa gave to him. Thank you, grandpa. And my son uh, practices his, his trumpet wherever the heck he wants in the house. And it's usually about three feet away from my head. And so this morning, and I, and I couldn't make this up. I'm going to be teaching about bugle players today. And, um, and on the morning of teaching about bugle players, I've got a bugle player with a real life trumpet in my kitchen three feet away from me playing um, an, an intelligible melody. He was basically playing in tongues on, on the trumpet. Now listen, I'm a cool father. I'm one of the more cool fathers that, that I know. I build tree forts with my kids and, and rockets and other things. And, and so I just wanted to support his passion. At a certain point, man, I couldn't take it anymore. And I'm just like, little homeboy, bro, the, the trumpet's got to go back in the case. You know, I'm about to lose my salvation. Let's put, you know, and that's what, that's what Paul says. He says, some of your churches, it's like, it's unintelligible. As some of you, it's like you got a bugle player and your bugle, is, it sounds like a, a elephants in mating season. And you're, you're trying to call the people to war, but nobody even knows what you're, what you're calling. And it doesn't make any sort of sense. He says, in Corinthians, I'm looking at, I'm hearing about your church service. And, and I don't want to be offensive, but your church services aren't making any sort of sense. It's the sound of war. No, it's not. It's a racket. Verse 9. So, so it is, he goes, so it is with you. Unless you speak in a language that's easily understood, how will anyone know what you're talking about? You might as well save your breath. Verse 10, I suppose that the world has all sorts of languages, and each conveys meaning to the ones who speak it. I'm like a foreigner. If I don't understand the language, and the speaker will be like a foreigner to me. And that's what's happening among you. Um, what, like, uh, these poor people that go to your services, it's like watching a foreign film without subtitles. It's like watching a, a, a kung fu movie without any kung fu and no subtitles. That's better. That'd be frustrating. Like, when do they fight? They don't fight. What kind of kung fu Return it back to Blockbuster. Verse 12, it says, and that's what's happening among you. You're so passionate about embracing the manifestations of the Holy Spirit. Now become even more passionate about strengthening the entire church. This is what he says. You're so passionate about the things of God, but you're not passionate about the people of God. Would somebody just be like, oh. Like, oh, like you just, thank you. Verse 13, so then. It makes me just feel like I'm doing a better job. So then, if you speak in a tongue, pray. Check it out. If you speak in tongues, pray for the interpretation to be able to unfold. I love that. I love that. I love that, Brian Simmons. If you speak in a tongue, pray for the ability to be able to unfold and expand the meaning of what you're saying. Isn't that, isn't that fascinating? Every time you speak in tongues, there's an opportunity to take what you're saying in the Spirit and to begin to unfold it and unpack it until it begins to reveal something on the earth that previously only existed in heaven. For if I'm praying in a tongue, verse 14, my spirit is engaged in prayer, but I have no clear understanding of what is being said. If you want to receive the fire of God and the gift of tongues, you have to understand that it's one of the least cognitive spiritual disciplines that you'll ever engage with. When you read your Bible, your soul is like, okay, this is good, this is good, or this is interesting, okay? When you pray, your mind is saying, okay, I'm engaged, okay? When you, when you, when you speak in tongues, your mind is like, whoa, 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 what's up, what's up, what's going on? What's going on? What's going on? I don't dig this. What's going on? So um, now when you begin to speak in tongues and you're walking in that gift, your mind just knows, okay, this is just what you do. Your mind says, okay, I'm just going to let your, okay, cool. Your mind just says, all right, cool, whatever. I'm just going to, in fact, um, how many of you guys have ever seen on YouTube the, the YouTube videos of the people that they, they've done these MRIs and studies of the brain to see what happens to the brain when you speak in tongues? What happens to, what happens to the brain when you speak in tongues? It's like nothing else. Scientists are baffled. When, you, when your spirit man begins to speak in tongues, your, your, your brain, your mind just goes, ah. You see, here's the thing. Right now, your brain is getting a lot of information. Your brain's telling you about, you got lights over here, you got screens over here, you got something crazy back here, you just got a lot of stuff, you got Darren and whatever. Like right now, I'm actually competing against every, everything else in this room. I'm competing against the person there. I'm, I'm, com I'm competing against your phone that's vibrating in your pocket, letting you know that Dogecoin's going down even lower. Like I'm competing against like all this, all this, all, all this stuff. Here's what happens. When you begin to speak in tongues, your brain gets into a spiritual hot tub. The jets turn on, and your brain just goes, peace. Peace. 
your brain, your mind becomes a, a servant instead of being the master because all day long your mind is saying, I'm in charge here. What's up? Your mind's telling you this is what's important. Focus out. Your, your brain works so, so, so hard all of the time, which is why when most of us pray, we'll actually close our eyes. Why? Because when we close our eyes, the natural world will disappear and the spiritual world can open up. And when we close our eyes, it says to all distractions, lights, screens, neighbors, vibrating cell phones, when we close our eyes, it says nothing else matters except for you, Jesus. And we can tune out everything else and turn up, tune, tune into Jesus. So if you want to receive the gift of tongues, you're going to have to tell your mind, all right, you go, you go to the hot tub. You're not going to be able to figure this thing out. And you have to engage with the gift of tongues in the same way that you engage any other reality in the kingdom, and that's not by understanding, but that's by faith. I'm not going to understand this, but I'm going to receive this, and I'm going to step out. This is silly. I feel the presence all over me. Oh, it just went from a but to a she, 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 d, d, d. We're into d, 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 and wakes me up just after I've been asleep for about five minutes. And what does she say? She pokes me in the eye and says, shoo. Shoo. You just woke me up to say shoo. Hey, welcome to the kingdom of God. You're going to learn to be born again, which is meaning you're going to get a language of the spirit, which means you're going to have to learn to talk again. Shoo. This is what he says. If I'm praying in tongue, my spirit is engaged. Wah, 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 wah. But I have no clear understanding of what I'm actually saying. Verse 15. So here's what I've concluded. I will pray in the spirit, but I'll also pray with my mind engaged. You see, even though we believe in the spirit, we believe in praying in the spirit, that doesn't make our mind the enemy. We bless our mind. You have the mind of Christ. Your brain's not the enemy. Logic and rationale, that's not the enemy. Here's what he says um, uh, uh, here. He says, I've concluded, I'll pray in the spirit, but I'll also pray with my mind engaged. Declare with me, I'll pray in the spirit. And I'll also pray with my mind engaged. I like this part. I will sing of rapturous praises in the spirit, and I will also sing with my mind engaged. What's he talking about? He's talking about I will sing in the kind of language that lifts me out of the earthly realm and takes me into the realm of my father, the unseen realm. But I'll also sing and worship in this time in earthly space. Verse 16. Otherwise, if you're praising God in your spirit, how could someone without the gift participate by adding his amen to give uh, to, the, to the giving of your thanks since he doesn't have a clue of what you're saying? Your praise to God is admirable, but it does nothing to strengthen and build up others. 18. I give thanks to God. I, I, I love this. This is one of my favorite verses. I give thanks to God that I speak in tongues more than all y'all. Now, I know that you've been taught by your mom that you should never brag, especially when it comes to spiritual things, but this is what Paul says. Paul says, hey, I thank God that I speak in tongues more than any of you. I think that you should do this next time you go out to, for a coffee with your friends. Just, just throw it out and see what their reaction is. You know, just, just be chilling. You guys are talking about whatever you talk about, whatever, and then just, just bring it up. Just see what they do. Just be like, hey, um, I thank God that I speak in tongues more than all y'all. That's what Paul says. I speak in tongues more than any of you. But in the church setting, I would rather speak five intelligible English words than 10,000 exotic words and a tongue. That way, I could have a role in teaching others. Beloved ones, don't remain as immature children in your reasoning. As it relates to evil, be like newborns. When it comes to evil, be, be ignorant. But when it comes to your thinking... Think like a mature adult. For it is written in the law, I will bring my message to this people with strange tongues, with foreign lips. Yet even then, they will still not listen to me, says the Lord. So then, tongues are not a sign for the believer, but they're a miracle for the unbeliever. Okay? Prophecy, on the other hand, is for the unbeliever, but a miracle sign for 
believers. What does it say there? Tongues are not a sign for believers, but a miracle. Prophecy, on the other hand, is not for the unbeliever, but a miracle sign for believers. If the entire church comes together and everyone is speaking in tongues, won't the visitors say, Y'all are loco in the cabeza, I say. Verse 24. But if everyone is prophesying, okay, and an unbeliever or one without the gift enters your meeting, check it out, he will be convicted by all that he hears and will be called to account. Why? For the intimate secrets, the hidden things of the heart will be brought out into the light, and he'll be mystified and fall face down in worship and say, God is is truly among you. Let's pray real fast. Father, we thank you for the gift of tongues. Lord, we thank you that he who speaks in tongues speaks to God, utters intimate mysteries in the spirit and advances spiritually, but the one who prophesies builds up the church. Lord, we want to be a spiritual people that are walking in this reality, that are being advanced spiritually and walking in the precious gift of prophecy for the edification of the church to see the body come into maturity. That is our longing. We long to be matured, to step into a maturity in our thinking, and to step into a maturity supernaturally and spiritually. In Jesus' name, amen. Guys, we're going to talk about a tension that exists in the, in the, in the church. The tension that exists in the church is that there are two dominant different philosophies or methodologies for church. The first one is people focus. And perhaps you've been to a church before where the mission statement was, we exist to reach people for the glory of God. Now, when you're part of a, a people-focused church, the, the, the number one thing that you want are, if you're taking notes, write this down, people. So if you're part of a people Focus church, then you need to have some people. Okay, so when you're part of a, a people focused church, okay, um, uh, 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 then 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 you're gonna have a segment. You're gonna have a people that you want to reach. You'll put together a, a a real cool marketing campaign. You'll do some fundraising. You'll put together a a, a Facebook ad to do what to target people. You gotta have. People and they're going to see your Facebook thing, and then where are they going to go? They're going to go to your website. Listen, anyone that's planning a church, you should probably be taking notes right now. You're going to have to have a website. Now, when you go to the website, people are going to want to know where's your church, okay, and when does it meet, okay? You don't need a picture of the pastor. You don't, you don't need a bunch of media. You don't need a bunch of Twitter, this or that. You, all you need on your website is where do you meet and when do you meet? If you don't have that on your website, I'm sorry, you do not have a website, okay? All right, and then pe- churches that are actually after people, okay? You go to the church, and there is a sign to let you know that the building is a church, and you come driving up, and it says, this is where the visitors get to park. The visitors get a special spot right next to the handicapped people, but if you've been here for a while, if you call this church home, you're going to have to park in the third heaven up by Jesus and the angels, okay? And if you go to SRC, you know this is how we roll. And no, we don't send a golf cart to come pick you up. Why? Because, (laughs) all right, you know, know, here's the thing, though. I I can tell you, like churches where it's all about the people, you know what I'm saying? Like like they do have golf carts, and you get to to park in, how many of you have ever been to a church where you, the parking lot was so big that you parked in the baby Jesus section? Or the, or the, or, you know, or the, you know, the, the Balaam's donkey section or whatever, right? Like, like, you know, and you go in and there's greeters and there's layers of greeters and there's just people. And, and, and this is what you know. Hey, this church is really excited that I'm here. And you go into worship and you get five minutes of, 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 of good, solid worship, you know, five minutes, and then, and then you're done, you know, and then you get a really cool video, you know, where, where a, a great looking person tells you what's, what's, what's happening at, at, you know, and then when the video's over, the, the pastor comes up and preaches for 15 minutes, okay, all right, and then blesses you with a benediction and, and slaps you on the, on the bottom 
them and says, now go out and spread it, you know, and, it, and, and you can run a service these days in half an hour. I don't know if you've seen that. And it's very convenient, uh, you know, it's fun. It's McDonald's church, you, you know, number four, no pickle, no onion, you know, and, and, and it's just, and it's super, super convenient, okay? But then you've got other churches and they're, they are presence focused. And, here, and here's what that means. They are no longer on Facebook, okay? Because Facebook is socialist media and they're tracking all your private data. So you, you know, so you're not doing paid ads on, on, on Facebook. Why, why would you ever exploit all the data that the CIA is using to track you in order to get people to come to your church? Good times. All right. So then, uh, you know, so then you want to find out, I want to go to a presence-driven church. So I go to their website, and then they've got all their YouTube videos, and they've got angelic manifestations, and, and you, you can see the gold dust and, and, and all this stuff. But you can't even find out where they meet or when they meet. So if you want to find a good presence-focused church, you got to pray and ask for the angel Gabriel himself to come and give you direction just so you can find where do these people meet and when do they meet. When you get to the building, there's no sign out front. Why? Because it's not about you. It's about the presence of God. We don't need you to come. We need God to come. So then you wander around the building with your family just to find the, the door that'll get you into the service. You come walking in, you find that you actually walked into, um, into the children's church. You get yelled at because you can't have adults. In it. You're like, I don't, how do I penetrate this thing? How do I, it, it, it's easier to get into the Illuminati than it is some presence-focused church. It. You know, finally, you know, fi finally, finally you get in. Worship's not five minutes. No, worship is three hours. And they don't even sing songs. They sing one sentence over and over and over and over again. In fact, they don't even put words on the screen. Why? Because it's not about you, silly. It's about him. We're not singing for you. We're singing to him. So after three hours, finally the minister gets up and begins to bring you all kinds of prophetic revelation that he got through encounter without any sort of scripture verses to back it up. <laughs> now, I'm being super extreme and I'm going both ways um, because we have seen these things take place in the church. We have seen this tension, this tension between are we going to be presence-focused or are we going to be people focused? And I am telling you, I, I, have, see, I have seen a thing where, where, where churches have shut down moves of God, like, like legitimate moves of God with healing and deliverance, where pastors have shut it down. Why? Because it freaked out the money people in the church and they did not want to go with the move of God. Why? Because I'll, I'll tell you something, Holy Ghost, he freaked people out. I'm just going to tell you how it is. The Holy Spirit is scary. You know, and you see it, you see it in the Bible. Jesus would show up and he'd freak people. He'd come walking on the water. He'd come walking through walls. Jesus is scary. Holy Spirit is scary. We hosted the whole, a crazy revival back in the 90s, back when revival wasn't trending. Okay? We hosted revival when it was all about the secret sensitive church. I'm telling you, um, uh, uh, churches were exploding overnight because they were doing dramas in church. And then you come here and people were literally barking like dogs and roaring like lions. And I'm not kidding. It was wild. It was demonstrative. And, we didn't, and, it, and it didn't get us at the top of any cool sort of ranking kind of system. It got us protesters. It got us talked about on the radio. And there were some leaders that said yes to God, even though it meant getting called into the denomination on a fairly regular basis because people thought we were possessed by the devil. Yeah, it's true. Why? Because when you get possessed by the Holy Spirit, the religious grid isn't going to know what to do with you. And so because of the leaders that ran before us, we get to run with a certain kind of freedom today. And nowadays, thank God, revival is trending. Revival is hip. We don't have protesters. We don't, we don't really get talked about too, too, too much. It's a different kind of scene. Because of the people that ran before us, embraced the reproach because of my parents, my parents' generation, people like Pastor Gale, these people that ran before us where they said, we're going to lose a lot of people 
Okay, this church lost a lot of people, but they said yes to the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit honored this house. It's the tension. If we say yes to the Holy Spirit, we could lose some people. Why? It's kind of, it's kind of scary. Yeah? But there's also a tension. If we try to create a house where people are loved, or if we try to create a house where, where people can actually find the door, if we try to create a, a house where people can connect with the church, is that going to cost us the Holy Spirit? This is, this is the tension. Are we too people-focused, uh, right? right? Or, or forget people. This tends to be the popular thing. I'm telling you, I hear it all the time. We are not people focused. We are presence focused. And this is where Paul writes to the Corinthian church. Hey, this is where Paul writes to Seattle Revival Center and says, whoa, 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 whoa. Slow your roll. You think you're super spiritual, but you are so crazy that there is no more Jesus in your crazy. This is what he says. People are not getting saved. Marriages are not getting reconciled. The hearts of the sons are not being reunited with the hearts of the fathers. Why? Because you are be trying to be so spiritual. You're trying to just, you're trying to make something happen. And, and in all of this, you're losing out of the main role, which is to do what? To make disciples of nations. So in this place, I'm going to talk about what I think the problem is. And then I'm going to give you what I think the solution is. And then I'm going to tell you what we're going to do. It's Pentecost Sunday. So we're going to stand up and we're going to speak in tongues. <laughs> and then what are we going to do? We're going to interpret it. We're going to be a biblical church. Okay? We're, going to, we're, just, going to, we're just going to go after it. Why? Because it's Pentecost Sunday and, and, and we're, we're, we're wild. <laughs> All right, what's the problem, Pastor Darren? The problem is isolation theology. It's this idea that the Holy Spirit will come and go, and that there are some things that we can do to make Holy Spirit come close, some things that we can do to make Holy Spirit go away. So in our attempt to be focused on presence, to be focused on Holy Spirit, we get wild, really, really wild, thinking that being wild for wild's sake is going to be pleasing to Holy Spirit. Now I'm going to give you an example. It's going to be an odd example. This is going to be uh, with the prophet Elijah and the false prophets of Baal. Okay, and now there's a there is this is like MMA. This is like a standoff, okay, between uh, Elijah and all these witches, and so Elijah says to them, "Let's see what Baal can do. Let's see what your God can do." He challenges them, and so the false prophets took a bull given to them. They prepared it, and they called upon the name of Baal. Uh, 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 morning until noon, all morning long. And they cried out saying, Oh, Baal, answer us. But there was no voice. No one answered. And they limped around the altar that they had made. And at noon, Elijah began to mock them. He said, Cry aloud, for he is a God. There, the, all these false prophets are, ah, 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 Baal, respond, Baal, ah, respond. And Elijah's sitting there like, <coughs> and he says, either he's musing, and I, I can't believe Elijah would say this, his mom probably just rolled over in her grave. He goes, or maybe Baal is relieving himself. He says, maybe your God's too busy going to the bathroom. Guys, this is in your Bible. You can check it out. He says, <laughs> you know, for those that say Christians shouldn't be sarcastic, you're not going to like Elijah, okay? He goes, <laughs> or maybe he's on a journey, right? Maybe he's on a hike. Maybe your God is asleep and needs to be awakened. What did they do? They cried even louder. Ah! And that didn't work either. So what did they do? They began cutting themselves with swords and lances until, check out, blood's gushing all over the place. This is just a violent, loud mess. Blood spraying everywhere. And Elijah's just sitting back like. <laughs> Elijah's got a weird sense of humor. And then as midday passed 
and they raved until the time of the offering of oblation, but there was no voice. No one answered. No one paid attention. And then we know what happens. Elijah prays and the fire of God comes. <laughs> lights up the altar that was covered in water. Wet wood burned. The problem is separation. When you believe that you're separated from God, you're going to act like the false prophets of Baal. And to a, great to a great degree, the Corinthian church was acting like the false prophets of Baal. And to a great degree, the charismatic church in America looks a lot like the false prophets of Baal. Ah, God, you gotta come. God, you gotta come. Ah. Why? Because of this separation kind of, kind of, kind of thing, right? And, like, and if we could just get enough people to begin screaming, if we could just get enough people, if we could just get, I'm telling you, if we could just get 120 shofars, then he would come. And, God, you gotta come. God, you come. Chris White, get up here. Sing, God, come. God, come. Ah! Maybe you should sing a little louder. Ah! God! Ka, ka. Hey, wrong religion. You're trying to tear a veil that's already been torn. Paul talks about it. Paul talks about it in the books, book of Romans, chapter 6. He says, we have been united with him in a death like his. He has been united with us. Everyone say union. You see, the problem is the, is the illusion of separation that says we got to be wild just to be wild because that's what a, that's what a, that's what a presence focus. Man, forget people. We just got to, ah, 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 throw out the coffee. It's idolatry. We're not doing coffee. Ah, we don't need coffee. We don't need a cafe in our lobby. We don't need, ah, we don't need, well, our music's too good. Let's just get bad music. Why? Holy Spirit loves bad music. Music. <laughs> the separation theology just turns people crazy, just for crazy. And Paul talks about this in, 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 in Corinthians. So what's, what's the answer? It's the revelation of union. Now I, now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking like, union like marriage? Yes. Paul says, we're going to have to talk about something. Uh, and Chris, would you, you want to come and just make Holy Spirit come back? I did too much. <laughs> yeah. Do you got a bugle patch on the keyboard? <laughs> Paul says we're going to talk about marriage, but the reason why we're going to talk about marriage isn't because it's about marriage. The reason why we're going to talk about marriage is because I need to reveal to you the revelation of union. That when two become married, you have two individuals and they become one flesh. And this is what Paul says. We're going to talk about marriage because I need you to get a revelation of the union between Christ and the church, the bridegroom and the bride of Christ. And the reason why this is so, so, so important is because Jesus Christ was the pattern son. And how often do we see Jesus going, you gotta come, you gotta come, you gotta come, you gotta come, ah, ah. No, Jesus said, when you pray, pray this way. Hey, Dad. I know who you are. I know where you be. Holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, here as it's there. You don't see Jesus modeling striving. You see Jesus modeling perfect union. Before Jesus did any miracles, before Jesus did anything cool, he was first water baptized by John the Baptist, and the Holy Spirit comes down like a dove, and he hears his father say, here's my beloved son in whom I am pleased. Jesus began his, his ministry with a revelation of union. Here's an example that I'll give you. Andrea and I, we're in union. We're married. 
Now, can you imagine how weird it would be if I invited you to come to my house for dinner? You come into my house, okay? You're the guest. I say, hey, c- come in, come in, but, but, but be quiet, okay? Be quiet. You, you can sit, you can sit on, the, on the couch over here, but just, you know, sit over there, okay? But just kind of leave us alone because I need to connect with Andrea. You'd be like, all right, cool. cool. Is, there, is everything okay? Yeah, everything was okay, but just, shh, you're already talking too much. Just, just sit down. And I, I say to Andrew, baby, you're so beautiful. Baby, baby, you're so fly. You <laughs> and you're sitting like, you're sitting on the couch. Like, you invited me. Oh, okay. I'm just, no, hey, you stop talking. You just sit on the couch. We're going to eat food. We're going to do our thing. But you just be quiet. Because I just need to connect with my, with my bride right now, okay? Oh, baby, your hair. Your hair is like Egyptian wheat. Baby, your lips are like two rhinoceroses on the on the Savannah Plains. Baby, I just want to kiss you. And you're sitting there like, man, this is so strange. You invited me over, but you're not hosting me. All you're doing is, is hosting your wife. Listen, if I invited you to come over to my house, guess what? I would take care of you. And I wouldn't worry about Andrea. Why? Because we're in union. I wouldn't be trying to like cater and do everything around her. Why? Because I'm really secure in my union with Andrea. And I know that together we're going to partner. She's going to do her thing. I'm going to do my thing. And we're going to work together to create an environment where the glory of God can be experienced. We're going to create an environment where you get to be hosted really well. Beloved, this is the picture of what the church should be. We are so insecure in our union in Christ Jesus that we do all this tap dancing for Holy Spirit, trying to get him to do something. When he's like, hey, let's partner together to create environments on the earth where people can be awakened to their identity and their destiny in Jesus Christ. What's the biblical church? The biblical church isn't presence focus or people focus. The picture of the church is Jesus, and this is what Jesus said. You want to know why I'm here? This is what Jesus says. Luke 19, 10. Jesus says, you know why I'm here? It's not to, it's not to host Holy Spirit. It's not to, it's not to get more intimate with the, like, all of that was true. All of that was true. But Jesus says, you want to know why I'm here? I'm here for you. I'm here for you. That's the picture of what the church should look like. The church should look like Jesus secure in our union in him i don't have to feel anything why i know where i am i'm in him and i know where he is he's in me yeah that i i can do all things through christ who strengthens me i'm in i'm in union with him i can be an amazing host to you without worrying that our relationship is going to threaten my intimacy with christ jesus you guys the earth is going to be better because of you The earth is going to be better because of the Holy Spirit who is in union with your spirit. And this is what Paul says. Speak in tongues. Engage in the spirit. But then honor your guests that are on the couch. You prayed for them. You invited them. And they're here, but they have no idea what's going on. You're acting weird. I love you. And Paul says, I would rather have five words in English than have to sit in your services where all you're doing is. I will never apologize for the manifestations of the Spirit within my life. I've cried harder on these floors than probably anyone here. These floors probably have more of my boogers than anyone here. I've been welded to these floors, but my snot and drool just, I'm telling you, there's been times I've gone into the bathroom, I look like I just got punched in both eyes, just completely bludged. I look like I just left Hempfest. I'm just like, whoa, what? I will never apologize for the presence of the Lord and the manifestations of the Holy Spirit. Don't you ever apologize for what God is doing 
in and through you, but know that you're a part of a body, that even when you can't speak, I'll speak for you and bring context to what the Lord is doing in you. And if I hit the floor and I'm unable to communicate, Pastor Gail will get up here, she'll grab a mic and say, Pastor Darren is not drunk as you suppose. It's only 7.43 p.m. (laughs) He's very, very filled with the Holy Spirit. In Acts chapter two, it says that the Holy Spirit came and the mockers showed up. Why? Because whenever the Holy Spirit comes, the mockers always show up. But Peter addressed the mockers. He, break, he brought context for what looked ridiculous. And when he brought context, thousands of mockers became believers. And we saw the, the birth of the first glory mega church on the earth. Thousands were added on day one. Why? Because one person had the courage to bring context to the craziness. I don't want to roll any crazy stuff. You're not going to like Holy Spirit. We're not afraid of crazy. I mean, what this world calls normal is stupid at best. You turn on Bravo or the E channel tonight. What this, what this world calls normal is stupidity on speed. And yet we're afraid to reveal the kingdom of God because we're going to get judged? Please. Please. What this world calls normal is brokenness, hopelessness, hatred, envy, greed, lust, murder, adultery. That's normal. And you're afraid that you're going to be judged because of your righteousness in Christ Jesus. You're afraid that you're going to be judged because you testified of light and life and hope. Let him judge you. Greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. Saints of God, it's time to engage in the spirit. It's time for all of us to be able to honestly say to our friends, I thank God I speak in tongues more than all of you. I would love to be able to say, I'd love to be able to get up here and say, I thank God that I speak in tongues more than all of you, but I know that my mom and Gail both have me beat. <laughs> Why? Because they're praying in tongues for me right now. I, I know. <laughs> I'm, I would make my wife so nervous when I'm preaching. I, I, I hear her down there on Sunday. <laughs> it's time to, it's time to pray in tongues. It's time to interpret our tongues. It's time to go real, real deep in the spirit. It's time to reveal Jesus. It's time to be secure in our union, who we are in him, uttering intimate ministry, uh, mysteries and bringing interpretation and reaching out to the left to the right and being the hands and the feet and the voice of Jesus on the earth. We went out yesterday to do outreach and a bunch of our teams here, we're actually going to stream testimonies live at Sarah Bible Center, Facebook and YouTube tomorrow night. You're going to hear, I mean, there's literally so many, so many testimonies of what Jesus has been doing through, through our group. But we walked up to one gal yesterday over at the, at the Space Needle. She was sitting there on, on a bench. And we began to talk to her. She was really, she was really mad. She was really irritated. She didn't want to talk to us. I don't want, you know, I don't want anything. What you, I already know everything you guys have to say. I know everything that the Bible has to say. I've been there, done that, tried all that stuff. Tried all your deliverance. Stuff. And I'll tell you, um, uh, Rachel and Jen just sat there loving her, loving her. She was like, just go away. I don't want what you, I don't want any of your, I don't, I'm not into. And at one point, it was almost like she threatened us. She's like, you're about to make me mad. Like she was getting really irritated and Jen and Rachel, they just kept loving her and loving her. And uh, they're like, she's like, you need to go away. And they just kind of sat down on the bench and just kept loving her and loving her. And I, and I, and I, and I, and I was standing there and I asked her, hey, what's your name? She's like, yeah, that's none of your business. She wouldn't even make eye contact at a certain point. I got to talk to her about, and you know, I felt like there was some shame there and some guilt there. And so I said, look, you're carrying a lot of shame. And I didn't look at her in her eyes either. I just looked away. I didn't want to intimidate her. She's sitting right there. And I'm just like, listen, you're carrying a lot of shame, a lot of guilt. There's, and there's things that you're, yeah, that you try not to blame yourself, but you, but you do, you blame yourself, but you, but you, but you don't, you don't want to, but you you didn't didn't have any other choice. And yet you beat yourself up because of these, these different decisions and stuff. And she's like, you don't know me. 
you're just trying to play psychological mind games on me. But, but I wasn't. I was reading her mail and I knew it wasn't Darren's mind. It was the mind of Christ. It was, I was prophesying and it was, and it was revealing what was going on. And so I just kept, I just kept going, just kept going on. And then all of a sudden tears are running down her face. And she says, she says, she looks at me, she goes, I've been through two abortions. She just, she just opens up. I said, I know, but God loves you. He's not blaming you. He's not mad at you. He loves you. And he sent us to tell you that he loves you, that he's concerned about you. She's just sitting there with tears just pouring out of her cheeks as, as these gals are just loving on her. And, um, and I, I sat next to her and I, and I said, um, hey, I, I, I tried, I, I, my heart was breaking for us. I, I tried to tell her about Hope Place. She's like, I know about Hope Place. I've been, I'm not into that. And I was like, what could I do to help her? There was nothing I could do to, to do to help her. My heart was just breaking, but I did. I didn't want to leave her I, because I, my heart was just so, you know, and, and, the, and the gals, like we're, like we're all weeping. Everyone there is weeping, but we don't know what, we don't know what to do. And, and we're just, and we're just there. I said, listen, all I can do is I can promise you that I'm going to pray for you. And when I pray for you, I'm going to pray for the woman at the bench. And I'm going to pray that Jesus comes to you and that he's going to be your shepherd. I'm going to pray that you would know that he will never leave you or forsake you. I'm going to pray that Jesus comes to you and that everything in your life changes as a result of this divine encounter today. I'm going to be praying for the woman on the bench. And she said, my name is Grace. I said, get out of here. Did you say your name is, is, is Grace? She said, yeah. I said, shut up. And she smiled for the first time. I told the woman on the bench to shut up. I said, do you know what your name means? She said, no. I said, your name means undeserved kindness because you are a gift from God to all these people out here. That you give, you give, and you give, and you get rejected, and you get hurt. She just began crying, crying. And I said, your father's going to come. And I said, I don't, I, 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 I don't know, I said, about your father. But if I was your dad, I'd tell you that I love you. If I was your dad, I would tell you that you're beautiful. If I was your dad, I would tell you I'm sorry for what happened to you. I would tell you that I was sorry that I couldn't be there for you. If I was your dad, I would rescue you. I would take you home. If I was your dad, and I just began ministering to her from the heart, from, 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 from my heart but I said but, but I'm not your dad but you have a dad you have a heavenly father and Grace he's coming for you today he's coming for you yesterday if you, if you count the teen challenge guys that were down there at Pioneer Square and Pike Place Market if you count our healing lands and cities that were at Cal Anderson Park yesterday if you count our team we had close to 40 people downtown what we were doing we were reaching out to people because we believe at Seattle Revival Center that people are not a threat to our intimacy with Christ Jesus We believe that Seattle Revival Center exists to awaken people to their identity and destiny in Jesus Christ. And we do children's ministry to see our children awaken to their identity and destiny in Jesus Christ. We do connect groups to see people awaken to their identity and destiny in Jesus Christ. We do praise and worship because we want to see people awaken to their identity and destiny in Jesus Christ. And we read and believe our Bibles and what is written in God's inspired word because we believe that the word of God awakens awakens people to their identity and destiny in Jesus Christ. And this is what I know. He's coming for you. He's coming for you. He's coming to awaken you to your identity and destiny in Jesus Christ. He wants to give you your vision back. He wants to give you your hope back. He wants to stir you up so that you are aware and not ignorant of your spiritual gifts. He wants to arouse you to 1 Corinthians chapter 13 kind of love where no matter how you feel, you know that you got a daddy who thinks you so gorgeous, who thinks you are so amazing, where you can say, I am stinking love, period, period, period. Not because of me, but despite me. I am loved, therefore I can love. 
I used to not be able to love. Why? Because I didn't know how loved I was. If you're watching online, you need to hear me right now. He stinking loves you. He loves you. He, so, but I don't love him. It doesn't matter. He loves you. And his love is coming for you. And if you're here in this room, it's too late. You've already been exposed to the radiation of his love. It's the fire of his jealous love. He wants to possess you with the fire of his love. Why? His love will change everything. Do you believe that his love could capture the entire city of Seattle through one surrendered soul that would say yes to the fire of God's love? Through one burning one in this room who says yes to Jesus, I will surrender everything. He could save a city through you. He could save a nation through you. What would it look like if an entire church said yes to spiritual gifts, to the love of God, and to 1 Corinthians chapter 14? that says we will not neglect this world because of our woo-woo spirituality. We will not neglect the loss because of our spiritual gifts and prophetic conferences. We will not neglect this world. We will love this world. We will reach out to this world. We will see the power of the gospel and his redemption at work because we are committed to the great commission to make disciples of nations. I want churches and nations. I want disciples and nations. I want sons and daughters and nations. I'm asking for cities. I'm asking for nations. I'm asking for corporations. I'm asking for businesses. I'm asking for recording studios. I'm asking for, for publishing agencies and arms. I believe that God is going to create a city within a city through Seattle Revival Center. I believe that God is going to create an experimental prototype, a, a futuristic community that pulls in the, 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 the restoration, the revelatory restoration of the future into the present where people can say, I experienced heaven before I was dead. Because of a people who are surrendered to the fire of God. Because of a people that say, I'm married to Christ. I'm the bride. I don't, I don't, I don't have to tap dance. I don't have to shabadaba. I don't have to act super spiritual. I know who I am. I know who I'm married to. His house is my house. His refrigerator is my fridge. Anything he calls me to do, I can do it. Why? Because he's given me access to the treasury rooms of heaven. I pray that my spirituality freaks you, freaks you all. I pray that my faith freaks you all out. And I pray that your faith freaks you. I pray, I pray that Sierra Valley, that we so believe in Jesus, that we so trust in Jesus, that we're always scaring each other. You did what? Jesus said, greater things than these will you do. And yet we still prefer to use the door when Jesus walked through walls. Listen, if Jesus walked through a wall, I, I, I intend to leave this building right through the roof one of these days. Not forever, just to go exploring. Yeah? You good? Yeah, you can come. You can come. Let's stand. I need to get home. Matt locks on. I need to make a nacho and watch Matt Lock. Let's pray. Go ahead and put up your hands like little antenna up to heaven. J say, Jesus, right here. Look at me. I'm right here. I'm right here. I'm just, just, just say, Jesus, I make myself available. I make myself available. I make myself available. You can burn here. You can make your home right here. Make your home right here. Make your home right here. Make your home in me. Make your home. Make your home in me. I Make your home. I am a temple of the Holy Spirit. I know that he is no respecter of persons. Make 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 your home right here. I make my myself available. I make my, my mouth available. I make my, my hands available. I, I believe by faith that I am reconciled because of the cross because of the blood of Jesus make your home make your home 
Make your home, make your home in me. I surrender, I surrender, I surrender. There's someone here and, and the devil's lying to you real loud right now. And he's, and he's saying that you're disqualified because of some things that you've done. And, 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 he's, and he's throwing a lot of guilt at you right now, saying that this word is for everybody in the, in the room, but, it, but it's not for you. With no one looking around, if that's you and the devil's being real loud right now, and he's telling you this is for everyone else, it's not for you because you screwed up too much. The devil is a liar. And the reason why he's coming after you is because God has called you for such a time as this. And tonight the Lord's gonna commission you. Who, who am I talking to? I want you to wave, wave at me real, real high. And who am I talking to? Wave, I got to wave, it gotta be obvious. This guy here? Anyone else? I'm talking to anyone else? Over there too? Brother, I'm going to take your hands. Is that okay? Church, just stretch out your hands. Father, let your fire come right now. What's his name? He came from Pioneer Square last night. High five, huh? We went to the enemy's camp. What's his name, Ron? Father, we welcome your fire, God. Let your fire come. Let your fire come. The fire of your love into Ron right now. The fire of your love. There it is, buddy. The fire of your love. There it is, buddy. Jesus, come. Jesus, come right now. Do what only you can do. Do what only you can do, Lord. Church, just begin to pray. Begin to pray. Begin to pray. Ron, as a priest, I declare your sins are forgiven. Your sins are forgiven. Your sins are forgiven. And you are free to go and to sin no more. I declare God's grace to empower you, to strengthen you supernaturally, to do what you could never do in and of yourself. I declare over you, you are a son, and your dad's pleased with you. Your dad is pleased with you. He loves you. There is no shame in his heart towards you. Father, I pray that you'd restore dignity. Lord, restore his place of sonship and dignity, Lord. Father, I thank you that you're receiving Ron tonight with a hug, with kisses. Lord, you're, you're taking off his old robes and you're giving him robes of righteousness. Father, I thank you for the party up in heaven. You're celebrating him because your son has come home. Your son has come home. Holy Spirit, come and strengthen him by your grace. Holy Spirit, come right now. Strengthen him by, by your grace. Strengthen, strength, 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 strength strength and I speak to every demon right now I, I bind you right now I command you to move aside right now every demon to move aside I bind you right now confusion heartbreak right now I bind you right now in Jesus name I bind you right now in Jesus name move aside confusion move aside right now move aside right now I speak clarity of mind clarity of thought restoration of purpose restoration of identity in Jesus name Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Yet, Ron, we're not even going to recognize you in a, in, a, in a couple weeks from now because the power of God is at work inside of you. I declare, dude, you are not disqualified. You are called of God, called of God, called of God for such a time as this. I declare you are an oracle of hope. So all hopelessness, let him go right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. This is going to be cool, guys. This is going to be cool. Awesome. Come on. Someone praise Jesus tonight. Amazing, right? The dude was in Pioneer Square. The guy, isn't that awesome? Come on. Bro with the blue shirt, can I pray for you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come up here. Can I pray for you? Come on, come on, come on. Church, just begin to pray in the spirit. He who prays in a tongue communicates to God and he utters intimate mysteries. Go ahead, just put up your hands. Father, I thank you for your passion, for your power. I thank you that you've called him for such a time as this. I thank you that he is fearfully and wonderfully made. Holy Spirit, come right now. Do what only you can do tonight, Lord. I thank you, Father. You set him apart, Lord. You set him apart. He's not like the other people. He, he wasn't like 
like the other kids. He wasn't like the other kids. There was something, there was something different about you. You, you spoke differently. You, you talked differently. And, and, and kids teased you. And they, they called you names. And they did, they did, did, did different sorts of things. But God said that even in the womb, he called you. He ordained you. And Father, I thank you for your fire, God, that's going to come and it's going to meet his hunger. Lord, let your fire come right now. Let your fire come right now, all the way. Yep, 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 right now, right now, right now. The fire of God. That's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. Yeah, right now, right now, right now, right now, right now, right now. We thank you, Father. You're bringing him into his full potential. Full potential. Full potential. No limits. No limits. No limits. No limits. No limits. No limits. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come here, brother. Come here, come here, come here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I told you I'd pray for you at the end. Jesus is all over you, yeah? There's more, dude. <laughs> There's more. <laughs> it's like Christmas time and all the presents. There's not just one present. Every good and perfect gift comes from your Father, the Father of life. Just go and put up your hands. Just see Him. See Him. See Him. I loose you right now. I loose you right now from all the pain of the past. I loose you right now. I loose you. I said you're loosed. I said you're loose. I say you're free. I say you're free. You're free. You're free. He who the sun sets free is free. Indeed, I speak to every lying, tormenting spirit. Shut up in Jesus' name. Shut up in Jesus' name. You shut your mouth, Satan. You're a liar. You're a liar. You're a liar. I declare Gabriel belongs to Jesus. He was blood bought. He is not his own. He belongs to you. Now, Father, in Jesus' name, I pray that you would loose your spirit upon on him right now right now no shame no shame freedom in Jesus name hallelujah come on church fill 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 fresh fire fresh fire fresh fire fresh fire fresh fire yeah let it loose let it loose let it loose no shame no mockery there's no mockery on your lips let it go let it go yeah 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 there it is yeah boldly boldly gabriel boldly that, that that's that's jesus that's it yeah 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 that's it he loves you so much bro he loves you so much he's so proud of you he's so proud of you he who the sun sets free is free indeed come on guys pray, pray for him you, you young men pray for him hallelujah lord hallelujah lord hallelujah lord hallelujah lord hallelujah Hallelujah. Alyssa, let me pray for you. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, because you're awesome and I love you. Just put up your hands. Jesus, you're doing something so cool in, the, in your daughter. You're doing something so cool. God, you're doing some cool stuff. You're doing some cool stuff. You're doing some cool stuff. Thank you, Lord, that the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. I thank you that Alyssa is a walking, living, prophetic drama. And Lord, I thank you that you're bringing her forward there's no going back there's no going back I just see that the enemy the enemy has been trying to trick you and say nah you're gonna go back but Satan you shut your face there's no going back you're gonna go from glory to 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 glory I said more glory on you I said more glory on you I said more glory on you I said more glory Whoa! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 Woo! <laughs> Whoa! Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. Christian, let me pray for you. Come here, buddy. Can I pray for you? All right, come here, bud. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. Just lift up your hands, buddy. Yeah. Father, I thank you, Lord. It's Pentecost Sunday. I ask for a fresh visitation. 
impartation from my brother right now. Just put your hands like this. A fresh touch. A fresh touch of your spirit tonight. Let your presence come, Lord. Let your fire come. Let your fire come. Fill him afresh, Lord. Fill him with your fire. Fill him with your fire right now. Fill him with your fire right now. If you need prayer, just go ahead and come up. I'll, I'll, I'll release the ministry team on you. <laughs> but yeah, don't be ashamed. Don't be afraid. The Holy Spirit's already here. Amen. You, you brought him in with you. So, so come on up here and we'll, we'll, we'll pray. Holy, ministry team, get up here. Come on. Yeah, yeah, you're fire, God. Fire, God. Fresh impartation, God. Fresh impartation, God. Thank you for what you're doing in his life. I thank you, Lord. You're putting your hand on his heart. You've called him, God. You've called him, God. You've called him by name. You've called him by name. This is a son. This is a son. This is a son. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I bind all confusion in Jesus' name. And Lord, I thank you for clarity in the spirit, God. I thank you for clarity in the spirit, God. And this is a pretty awesome ministry team. You should get yourself prayed for. Come on. Shaka siki yashako. More God. More God. More God. Transformation. 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 That's Jesus. That's Jesus. He's touching you. He's touching you. He's touching you. Yeah. 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 Filled. 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 Filled with fire, God. Filled with fire, God. Release him, Lord. Release him into the new. He's been saying, I'm ready for something new. I'm ready for something new. I'm ready, God, for you. He's been saying, I'm ready for you, God. He's been saying, yeah, you're just crying out for you at night, just saying, I want God, I want God, I want God. Yep, and I just hear the Lord say, ready or not, ready or not, here I come, here I come, here I come, Christian. Here I come, here I come, here I come. Filled, filled, filled. Right now, filled. Yep, yep, yep. Rivers, 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 filled. Filled. That's Jesus. That's Jesus. That's Jesus. That's Jesus. That's Jesus. Bubble up, bubble up, bubble up, bubble up, bubble up. Rivers, rivers, rivers of living water. Rivers of living water. Rivers of living water. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Well, we should let him go, huh, Steve? We're going to let you go if you're watching online. I'm going to pray for you real quick. I'm going to pray for you real quick. If you're watching at home, I just want you to connect with what we're doing here. Holy Spirit's here. I believe he's in your home. He's in your car. So just by faith, I want you to receive this right now. Father, I pray for a fresh touch of your spirit right now, God. I pray, Father, where anywhere there's hope deferred that makes the heart sick, that that, that that spirit of hope deferred would be broken off right now in Jesus' name. Lord, that you would ignite faith, hope, and love right now in Jesus' name. I pray tonight on Pentecost Sunday that the fire of God would come upon you, that the fire of God would come upon your head, that the fire of God would come upon your hands, that the fire of God would come upon your mind right now in Jesus' name, and I call you blessed of the Lord. God bless you guys. Have a good night.